told me you was recording us. Everybody, it is time to get your morning cracking. Somebody is over there in a real good mood. I see you smiling. Uh, Mr. Thomas, how are you doing today? Welcome to I'm Just Saying Live, everybody. Good morning, good morning to the lovely Tanil. I'm right. sipping that Tanil. Okay. And good morning to our family and friends out there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to I'm Just Saying Live. This is the show where you are going to get our twist on today's headlines. Okay, Let, let's right. just say this. It's definitely a lot to talk about. It's always something going on out here in these streets, not only here in Houston, but again, I'd like to welcome you because, you know, the brew gives us the energy. You know, I'm over here drinking my morning brew. This I can smell it. I didn't fix my cup yet, but we're definitely about to jump into some of these topics. Uh, we have some real special things lined up for you today. I have uh, one of my close friends, uh, Andre Notice, coming on, who is going to be talking about legacy living, okay? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm all about legacy and passing things on and making sure that we make our lives better for our children, okay? So he's going to talk about transformation today. Anthony Thomas, where can they follow you on social media? Call me underscore Ant. And of course, you, okay. Okay, and of course, you can follow me at simply.tanil on Instagram, and you can also follow the I'm Just Saying Live page at IJS Live. So, Let's jump right into our weekend recap. Let me tell you, there were so many things going on this weekend, but I definitely want to kick it off with the fact that I had the opportunity to attend. I thought I was going to Montgomery, right, over the course of the weekend for the trail ride. That's what I thought I was going to do. But I wind up out at Conroe at the uh, fairgrounds with Acres Home Roping and Riding. They throw an annual event each and every year, and this one did not disappoint as well they had a really great time and when I got out there Jay Paul was performing and I had a blast I even had the opportunity to take a new friend uh that my kids and I met at the swimming pool <laughs> I always talk about not being friendly but clearly I'm pretty friendly <laughs> what you think about that Anthony nothing wrong with being friendly just be friendly to the right people to the right people uh i guess that that definitely makes a difference she decided to get on out there and see something new if you will so i'm i'm very happy that she did that this week for the weekend recap i have a couple of videos that i'm going to show anthony how was your weekend are you there oh can you hear me i can now oh somebody trying to text me uh my weekend yeah. yeah, but when I got back, I went to sleep because somebody sent me to Pennsylvania. <laughs> your your job? <laughs> you better My be grateful. Remember, you got you get to go. That's how. That's what they said that you should do. Is you should get say that you get to go somewhere. That you know you're so happy, you're blessed. You know that you get to do these things. Okay. Well, amen. I've started, I've started trying to, you know, everybody's been always talking about this, you know, manifestation and these different things or whatever. And so there are some things that I could pick up from that. And so May is coming to an end. That's another thing that we're going to talk about. You know, next month, Anthony, is LTGBQ month. What? So Did we're you? definitely, we're uh, definitely going to have a lot to talk about during that month. Uh, <laughs> We're definitely going to have a lot to talk about, but let's kick off these weekend recaps because, you know, I don't want to run out of time. You know, lately we've been pushing for time because we have so many things to share with you guys. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to kick this off. I'm going to start off with a celebration for Ash. Um, I did have the opportunity to take my homegirl out. We learned uh, some new things that are going on here in the city, especially when it comes to community service and uh, helping out young men out here. So I'm just going to share real quick with you and we gonna get it roll up. the tape in god damn son. 
I'll get my coffee while that's playing. That's Neil, and I am Kimberly. Our listen. A man of the year. Year. Okay. Year. Okay. We'll take that. Okay. It's been 20 years in the game. Let's talk about longevity for just a little bit. Keeping yourself fresh, staying in the know and with the right people. Talk about that for just a little bit. Man, first of all, we gotta pray. Um, that's fine. You gotta pray every day. You just gotta continue to keep some successful people around you. They say you gotta have five successful people. It's more successful than you. Just, it's not really popular people, it's just successful people. Uh -huh. I mean, you just got to stay committed and grounded. You got to have faith. That's the number one thing in business. You got to have faith because you may never know how a lot of things are working. But if you just keep coming every day and you keep going, you have an open mind and you stay positive, good things are better. Now, this is one of those things that uh, makes a real issue for when people are young and out there. You're young, you're in the game, keep it fresh, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that part and getting people to respect you. I'm definitely young, I'm turning 20. Taking <laughs> time, I'm telling uh, everybody, we're not going to say that other word tonight, we're going to say that <laughs> yeah, I'm turning 20 twice. And uh, <laughs> you know, you just got to, in this game, you you know, you keep yourself connected to the youth and everybody that's. Everybody that's young and up and coming, you try to embrace. I try to embrace all the young entrepreneurs because I used to be a young entrepreneur myself. And uh, the, the kids keep me fresh. You know, all right. Like the car game and the, in the hip hop game, it's the fashion world, like we talked about today. It's, it's all connected to each other. So, you know, everything up hand in hand. And, you know, just keep it fresh and then, you know, keep the, keep the years out there. All right. What was turning up to? Uh, because. I'm turning 20 for the second time. <laughs> we keeping it old tonight. We keeping we keeping the 90s R&B vibes. It was very classy we keep in it, here. We keeping the, we, you know, we might turn up later towards the end of the night, but we want to keep it fresh. You see my man with the horn, uh, beautiful young lady up there. Uh, Thank you. 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 I'm trying to figure out why my All right, ladies and gentlemen, so right now, let's do this. Uh, I have one more from the weekend yes. because I did also attend Thank you for letting me know. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, oh, welcome, make sure we welcome, get that welcome, off. Welcome. Give me one second. I'm just saying live. You made it. Yeah, you I must have made it. Made it. Are here. Uh, of course, I yes. Did you see that, Anthony? That's not what I wanted to do, y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm going to do this. No, that's not what we wanted to do. <laughs> It came on afterwards. Here's the next from the pool party, the back to the 90s pool party. Check it out. Like we got some cocktails in our 90 attire. Get it? Dance the bad boys. Okay. <laughs> Go with it. How y'all doing? I'm gonna chill with you. I'm gonna chill with 
Don't you just love it when we, when we can get together and there's no problems? Look. <laughs> Now, this was right at the start of the party before everything got cracking, ladies and gentlemen. We had a wonderful time out of these hot rises in downtown Houston. What's up, everybody? It is simply Dr. Neil and we are here. I made it to the pool party and we are chilling. I cannot wait to show you everything that's going on. We're even going to sit down with Jack Thompson in just a little bit. So, he can talk to me not only about our beer, but some other really big things that he has coming up right here in the city of Houston. Talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> 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 it's a video camera. Hey! What you got out here? Are you working? what I'm here for. So now, is it for super beer drinkers who love a good ale, or is it for people on the light end that like pineapple ale? Like that as well. It's beer, um, it's not an acquired taste. Okay, meaning like, like it's really kind of good. It's definitely one of the <laughs> you go ahead and crack it open for me, right on there. Hold on. It's coming, you know, Snapchat, I'm pressing the button. All right, what's up, everybody? It's Simply Dr. Neal, and you know I always keep the hottest in the city with me. I'm out here in these streets for the day. You look at live. Y'all can see me in our nighting fashion, right? Do what I think. Yeah, I got my chain. Two rounds, a lot of Nigeria bars, and 
It's not going nowhere. They got knocked out. You know what? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they didn't have no help. Hey, hey, stuff like that you need to hold to the end because now I'm definitely not going to be able to focus. <laughs> oh, so. so we Because I haven't every, paid attention to a thing because I was ripping and running the weekend. So, yeah. Everybody knew or knows Golden State was going back to the NBA uh, championship. But guess who we got in the in the building that hadn't been there and God knows how long. And who's that? Boston Celtics. Mm, 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 wow. So what'd you say? Good. Well, it's wow. been a while since you said yeah. wow. Since yeah, Boston has that's been that's anywhere. They beat Miami. But we already know who's gonna get the ring at the end of the day. Okay. Boston, Boston can try, they can do what they gotta do. But when it comes to them light-skinned brothers. You know what? <laughs> what you say? You they can't, can't jump. They can't jump. Can't up. Hey, you can't out shoot them light skinned the cats. <laughs> then, they, then they got that youngster pool over there doing everything he want to do when he want to do it. So, hey, and Tra Drayvon Green, he's a beast. Don't nobody <laughs> like him. He's a beast. He can rebound. He can score. It reminds me of Dennis Ross. And, and why is it always like that, that? That people don't like the ones you know they really, really be out there. You know. <laughs> And then they wind up getting a bad, a bad rap because they got an attitude because everybody been treating them like trash now. Don't treat them like trash now. He putting it in y'all face. He yes, yes. He, he getting that money. He getting them rings. He don't care. Like Ladies, Dennis Ross. If, if you guys are just tuning in, this is our little sports recap with uh, call me aunt, if you will. We don't ever know where he's going to take us. I do not like how he just threw the Mavericks all under the bus like that, because you know I, I threw really, him under the bus? I was really hoping, wishing, and praying, okay? That's what I was doing. You should have prayed for more rain down there in that stadium when it started raining in the stadium. <laughs> Come on, man. And Jason, Jason Kidd didn't know what to do. Hey, I bet, I bet a lot of I bet a lot of them didn't know what to do. There's been some bad storms going on around here lately. So tell us what else you got in sports. Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. Oh, Javante Davis. Okay. He beat. He knocked out. What's his name? Romero in the sixth round. Man, look, Romero was talking all that noise, talking about how good he was. What he was gonna do to Javante? They, I mean, hey, he gave him a run for his money. But man, he messed around. He stuck that chin out there like this. Ugh. <laughs> but did he not tell him he was gonna knock him out though? No, Romero was talking about how he gonna knock out Javante. Oh, gotcha. Javante Davis 
is a beast. So I must have had I, I must have had the two mixed up when I was watching uh, the video where he told them he was gonna knock him. He's out. another light skinned cat with all the tattoos. <laughs> hey, this must be the year for the light skinned dudes. You know what? <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all. Why you gotta be color? You gotta colorize everybody. He's just a black man out there trying to get his money like everybody else. I'm it gonna was talk funny. about something that's in headlines that I don't know if you knew about. Um, in Vietnam, guess what? I never been. Whatever. They have they've broken another world record, a Guinness Book of World Records. And I'm gonna show y'all this real quick just because you know I clearly like popping things up on the screen, but they broke another world record and I just I I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was pretty crazy. Let me make sure that I get this to where y'all can see it. Let me see. There we go. Put my glasses on so I can see this. Put put it put it on because this is this is one of those things that you know, we're always just like, uh, really? Let's see if I can get that to come on screen. And we're going to say share. Okay. Now, here we are. Let me get there. I'm sorry. Uh-oh, our screen is right in the way. There we go. Where is it? I'm sorry. Shoot. Where is the thing? Mm, mm, mm. I know this is horrible. we are experiencing technical difficulties. It's not showing my thing. I need to get there. But anyway, here we go. We'll just do it like this. It's not making it all the way big. Let me see if I can get there. Oh, there we go. Thank God, finally. Listen. New world. The Bach Long Bridge connects two mountain peaks, and it is 273 73 feet long. But guess what? Is glass. You remember in Dubai oh, on that glass yeah. top? This is right, exactly right. the same way. There is no possible way. I'm just saying that I'm gonna be able to make it across. I, you see this one lady? I'm gonna be like her. I'm gonna be like holding on to the rail, trying to slide across the side. Two hundred and seventy-three feet of glass. It is a glass floor. What do now, you think? Who, who walking across that? Hey, you see who walking across that? They got plenty of visitors here. Mm, mm, mm. Plenty of visitors. 2,073 feet. <laughs> I am so not that's a little, what, two football fields? Hey, it ain't for me, baby. I'm going to just tell you right now, I think I would be scared of that. I always like to think that I'm an adventurous person, but I'm going to have to tap out on that one. Y'all, we also know that it's graduation season. We talked to you guys last week about a couple of gifts to give out. I know it's a lot of people going to be ready for this because, baby, these kids are everywhere. They acting real extra grown and having them a good time. Yes. Period. But I want them to be careful. You want to know why? Monkey pox is still on the loose. <laughs> Listen, I had you to know make what? that I put this in here today because we wanted to talk to you about monkey pox last week, but we wound up not getting on because of our anniversary. You know, we were celebrating big time. But listen, the monkey pox looks so nasty. <laughs> There have been 257 confirmed cases. Like this sounds like a prehistoric disease, don't it? It doesn't even seem like something real that we need to be catching out here right now. Well, my, what uh, what Reverend Vise say? <laughs> it's plague still out here. Pharaoh must still be out here somewhere. Anthony, if I come up with the monkey pox, oh my God. When I tell my, you, right, life at the police. Might as well be over. Okay, so there's 120 suspected cases. And I just want y'all, you know, I'm always trying to tell you the statistics and what is out there that's supposed to be real information. 120 suspected cases in 23 nations. So it's spreading, ladies and gentlemen. It is not in a centrally located area anymore. We have um, any cases in the United States? 12 reported cases from the CDC. That's where I was going next. I'm glad that you asked. As that in five African countries where monkeypox is commonly found, okay, they have 1,365 cases and 69 deaths. You can even die from this thing. So not only does it look bad, you can die. It sounds like a joke, monkeypox. 
Monkey. It's something you, like a kid to say, you, your daddy got monkeypox or your mama got monkeypox. This stuff is for real. Hey, it's for real. Y'all be careful out there. Y'all keep washing y'all hands. You know, keep your COVID protocol. I don't know how they're going to tell us that we can uh, battle this thing, but, you know. Don't touch nobody. It, this, one, this one definitely affects adults and children. Okay? What do you Everybody. mean, like, lesions? FR. Yeah, lesion, pussy ones, nasty ones. All right. You also know that we have been having tons and tons of fights over Roe versus Wade. You know, Nebraska's Republican governor, Pete Ricketts, says he is soon to make a special session on passing the total ban for abortion. I don't know what y'all about to do out here. I'm so glad that I don't have to think about this. I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to whatever. But I do know that family members, friends, everybody is out here still, you know, making decisions when it comes to stuff like this, when it comes to abortion. I told you where I stand. There are certain circumstances where I feel like uh, it should still be around. Just don't know what to say. So they they actually taking away people's right. not only freedom, freedom of choice and rights and voice and their opinion, but you technically tell people what they can and can't do. Right. And let me say this. If it were not for science, this I'm just saying, y'all, if it were not for science, giving them that right in the first place, would this even be an option? Science, yeah, because you know they still, they still it. before it was people. never an option. They out here cloning people. So I guess they say, well, um, yeah, if you don't want to do this and that. This is what we're going to allow you to do. But that, that woman has the right to make her own decision. Each woman. Like you say. Each woman. Now that now that it is here, now that it is here, now that it is time, you know, in, in a time where people can do these things, uh, they're making choices according to how their finances are set up. They're making choices, you know, not to do the right thing when it comes to having sex. They're having this free sex out there. Y'all, and you know, sometimes we know that people say that there are accidents and this, that, and the other, but there are so many ways nowadays that you can prevent something like this from happening. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. I really don't. Listen, y'all know I like numbers. Let's get to my number. 105. What do you think million? that relates to, Big Daddy? Oh, I thought you said you won the lottery for 105 million. Oh, I wish. 105 miles per hour. Hour. That's the speed the winds of the Hurricane Agatha reached yesterday when it made landfall in southern Mexico. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but there have been massive floods and all this kind of stuff going on um, in these uh, southern continents. Brazil is included and like 60 something people have died from floodwaters. OK, y'all be careful out there. I know y'all booking these trips, trying to have these hot girl and hot boy summers. Be careful where you're going. There is a lot of things going on with global warming, but we are going to be hearing something on next week because I need to find out more detail on it. Uh, in France, they've been working on something that's supposed to help with this climate change. So I think that someone has finally come up with a conclusion as to how they can get the stuff fixed. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, stop tearing down all of the, the forests and trees and stuff. <laughs> we're gonna be a concrete, we're gonna be a concrete world like New York is already. I don't think that that's what they're gonna do. Uh, I think it has something to do with technology, but we're we're gonna see. And I'm gonna make oh, sure Lord. I'm gonna make sure that you guys know all about it. <laughs> they not God and they out here trying to play with Mother Nature and God, or just to say God in general. That's they can't predict what's going to happen. Talking about these seeds, storm seeds and all this. So these man-made hurricanes and tornadoes, they need to tell that to the people up in Oklahoma. They always sending them tornadoes up there, tearing down their little mobile home. <laughs> what you say, tearing their mobile home down? They tear all kinds of homes down with miles at 105 miles per hour. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that part. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, you know, later in the today in the show today, I told you we're going to have Mr. Andre notice on he's going to be talking about legacy 
living and how to transform your life. We're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship is one of those things to transform your life. I also want to talk to you because, you know, we always got upcoming events, um, Domino Tables Forever. I want you to go check out their page. They have something that's new and upcoming. They're uh, moving around on a tour somewhat, and you need to catch it. If you like Domino's, this is definitely the scene for you, okay? I also want you to know that July the 23rd, July the 23rd, I cannot say this enough. My favorite charity, Annual Underwear Affair, is coming back again, and they're going to be strong in the community of Fifth Ward, and we're going to be passing out donations of undergarments to kids, but we cannot do that without your help. So, ladies and gentlemen, please go and follow at AUA Charity on Instagram and find out how you can help. Anthony, anything you want to say to the people out there in regards to helping with uh, the charity? We also need volunteers, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it's always helpful to help these kids out here. You, we really don't know their situation, but let's try to help them get the undergarment, the bed linen, the stuff that they need to go to school. That, that's going to help them out a lot. Because nobody want to be in school free balling and being uncomfortable. And that's going to help them you know, focus on their work. Hey, what's up, Shirley? How you doing? Thanks for joining. Listen, I definitely need you guys to make sure that you do that. We are also on Amazon. All you have to do is go to our shopping cart. You can pick one of the things from the list that we need most. Uh, and we would love for you to do that. Again, if you would also like to be a part of the conversation here at I'm Just Saying Live, all I need you to do is email us at I'm Just Saying Live at gmail.com. That's I'm Just Saying with just the N, no G, live at gmail.com. Or you can text us at 214-289-0195. Now, we were sitting up here and we were talking about all these different things going on in the news. How do you feel, Anthony, in regards to the Ukrainian situation? A lot of people have kind of stopped talking about it and the things that are going on surrounding it, but they just keep on and they're pressing into certain parts and they're down to their last few cities. How do you feel uh, from the beginning of this? Has your mind changed about anything that's going on uh, with that situation? Well, as far as the, the, the UN or the United States getting involved with it? Well, they, you no. know, what you say? No, that part hasn't changed. You're glad that no, they I mean, out of it? They kind of really didn't stay out of it, but they kind of did. Because mm -hmm. they was trying to, what they say, aid and abed them on the slick side. But then when Ukraine started surrendering and giving up they, the parts of their country to the Russians, hey, you can't give in at all. You got to continue to fight, stay strong. But I know it. They didn't put it like this. Don't go to war if you're not ready. These people over here got guns and you got bow and arrows. Come on, man. Let's think about it. Before you get out of here, now you got all these kids, women and children dead because y'all wasn't prepared. And your comedian president want to get over here and start making jokes somehow bring it on. And by no way are we trying to make fun of the fact, you know, that that's what he did in his past life, this, that, and the other. But when we're putting people in these places, just like, you know, America showed everybody that you can pay to be the president, um, you, you got to expect some type of, you got to expect some type of backlash from these things when we've, society has gotten so far away from what all of these things really meant in the beginning. Democracy was supposed to be a thing that was revered and, you know, honored. Now, I don't think we're in that world anymore. We're not even in the world of respecting the president. We don't call him by their name. We don't say president such and such anymore. Like come up with to. a name every time, right? <laughs> yeah. You just calling them the, the orange face man or whatever. And then even when our president Obama was in office, they didn't even put the title president on. Yeah, I, told, about Barack. I, I told several people to, that once we had an African-American uh, president, that that would be the last respect we basically had for the White House. Right now, we're not really even watching or caring what Biden and, and, and Kamala are doing at this point, because everybody is just so thrown back by, you know, at first, the lack of interaction, if you will. And we know that they're doing plenty of things behind the scenes, I'm sure. But, you know, that forefront, we were just so used to uh, Trump being out there in the limelight on Twitter, on whatever. It just seems right. like they've retreated into 
the White House, if you will. So that part. But let me tell you, since you know you brought up the fact that we're not respecting things, I want to take time to go ahead and do our social unrest piece because I wanted to squeeze it in this spot today because we needed a little bit more time to deal with the things that have been going on. Kansas City Police Department shoots a 20-year-old pregnant Black woman named Leona Hale, ladies and gentlemen. That's one instance. We also know that we are still in the aftermath of the Buffalo shooting, ladies and gentlemen, where 10 people were killed in a racially motivated mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. Okay, it was just a Saturday afternoon. Remember, keep your kids safe out here. Is it time for some tactical training? I believe so. I'm just saying it's time for you to start teaching your kids how to react in these types of situations because it looks like they are not going anywhere anytime soon. We also recently had the church shooting, uh, the gun violence uh, that played Southern California um, in I think it was Laguna, Laguna Woods that was probably about a week or two ago, um, which was another incident that was racially charged. We got a, these gun shootings, there's, there's so many different things going on. Uh, we've also had our Texas school shooting that is really big. It's on everybody's mind right now because there were students here who passed away. Um, what the funerals have started happening for the victims of the Uvalde uh, school shootings, Anthony. And now, you know, it's kind of being brought to the forefront again. You know, down here in Texas, we also had the NRA's meeting. They canceled the performances. We were talking about this, you know, amongst our right. schools. They canceled the performances to try to dwindle it down so it wouldn't be like after something bad like that happens that they're out here celebrating and still doing their thing. But how do we feel about gun control at this point? I've just listed all of these things that have to do with the guns clearly not being controlled, how do you feel yeah. about gun control? Tell, tell me how you feel about gun control. First of all, it's not the, okay, we're saying gun control. So when the public hear gun control, they thinking that the guns are the issue. It's not the guns, it's the individual or the people lacking of upbringing or teaching our kids or us in general as adults taking the time to put the guns up keeping them secure or teaching your child that this gun right here, it'll kill, it'll take lives. So we need to teach our kids, we need to teach ourselves and it's not the guns, it's us, it's the society. Oh, that's that's true. I, I can I can definitely get that. It is it's society's mindset. People thinking that they need to protect themselves, if you will, um, and they're taking it, they're taking it into their own hands. Do we we feel like that has to do with uh, the lack of police involvement, the dwindling numbers of police that we have on the streets? Well, the lack of police that comes that comes into play, consistent of the um, the epidemic, and. They don't have enough cops to be wherever they need to be. And a lot of them getting sick or whatever. And a lot of cops, just like a lot of school teachers, they're not trying to take the chance, the chance on being out there, losing their lives, catching corona or whatever is going on out here in society. So everybody is trying to be safe. And you can't, you can't neglect or knock the fact that they're trying to be safe for their family. So you want them to go in and take risk in their lives when they got a family at home they're trying to get home to? No. I'm still in agreement with people who are protecting their homes and things of this nature. But when it comes to not being safe, allowing your kids to take those guns from the home because that's not being responsible uh, and other people's children are dying, I'm definitely not a fan of that. I'm just saying, period. That part. I don't care. Yeah. Who don't like it? I don't care. <laughs> you know, we, we have enough wars taking people out. We've got these diseases that are spreading. No one wants to find out over the course of the day while they're just trying to pay their bills at work, while their child is at school, supposed to be learning. But this is another reason, you know, this is the end of mental health month. And I really wanted to push this. Pay attention to your people. I know that you say you don't have enough time for this, that, and the other. You make time for what is yes. important. Your children's mental health is important. They have brains too, if you will. Uh, we need to make sure that we're keeping up with those things because 
It's hurting other people's children. It's hurting you knowing that your child did that. I would never be able to believe if something happened like this and you know, I'm trying to put myself in the place of those parents, I would never believe that my child did something of this magnitude. And we got to pay attention to our kids, not only just in general conversation or what they're doing, we need to pay attention to what they're watching on YouTube, TikTok, what they participating in, and the games they like to play. When you're not focused, like you say, taking the time out to see what your child is doing, hey, I'm not calling you a bad parent, but I'm going to say you're neglecting as a you're parent. Yeah, you're neglecting your responsibilities as a parent. So just to make this real to you, the families of the victims have received custom caskets provided at no cost in two funeral homes in Uvalde have vowed to cover all expenses. Listen, when, when the community starts reaching out, it still doesn't make it feel any better. No, it doesn't. Your child is gone. Your child Not is people. gone. Now yes. people are starting to point, point fingers. Uh, people are asking about the responsibility of law enforcement. You know, I just brought that up in regards to the police, the smaller amount of police that are out on the streets these days. Um, wait, wait. They didn't wait. respond fast enough to this incident is where I'm going okay. is before you okay. comment. Yes. Before yes. you comment. Um, they, they, people feel like they did not respond fast enough. Even though there were several calls to 911, they did not take the shooter out fast enough. Um, do you think that that's because, you know, it was a youth, if you will? No, it's, it's honestly, there's no thinking to it. The they have rules in place. Stated. They have they rules stated. in place, right. They stated that they were not going in there because they didn't know where the shooter was or where he can be. He was, barricaded, he was barricaded in two conjoining rooms for over where an hour. The, where at the time, they didn't know exactly where he, were, he was. They so they were afraid right. that they may shoot another student. Or get killed themselves. True, okay. Now, tactical team, now when the tactical team arrived, we expected the tactical team to go in there, SWAT. They didn't even go in at the time. And then that's when they found out he was barricaded somewhere. And they still taste, wasted their time. Parents were pleading and crying. And a couple of them like, hey, man, give me your gun. Let me go. And a few tried to go in. Wow. But you can't, you can't tell me that something is happening at my boys' school. One of us not going to be in there. Mm -hmm. Being there with them. They told us that a hurricane was coming or a bad storm. <laughs> hey, let me in this class with my baby. No, we can't do it, Mr. Thomas. You going to let me in this door or I'm going to kick this door? The ceiling not coming down on, look, the ceiling not comes, coming down on my baby and I'm not trying to dig the rubble out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> That part. Right. Also, let me talk to talk to you about one more part, um, you know, because we're coming up on a time where we will be talking to um, our special segment for today. Um, and later in the show, of course, you know, we're going to have our Tennille's touchy subject. So make sure you guys stick around. We are right now talking about the different things that are going on around these shootings, around this gun control. Also here, here in Texas, here we got it. This is the other thing. The, um, what is it? Uh, the U Valley City Council also announced that it was going to postpone its meeting because they were supposed to be inducting uh, Mr. Arredondo, who has not been sworn in and no one has basically kind of seen him since the shooting took place. Do you think that the next person coming in should be mm. more of a statement when it comes to things like this or hiding in the wings until he takes office? I really don't know because I mean, most most people coming in the office will take something like this as a platform where they can say, "Hey, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z to make sure this never happens again." And I think that he does not want this negativity attached to his reputation right from the start. On the other hand, this is I'm just saying live. You should have been out there. You should have been supporting those parents. You should have been talking to the police commissioner in regards to what did happen and what was the truth and make sure that the people know the truth about what really went on. These people are trying to figure out if this could have been avoided by the police going in there and doing their jobs a little bit more efficient. 
but they were yes. probably trying to protect other students. We will never know what was going through the heads of those that were in charge that day. And, you know, I just I just want to say, you know, we did I did Memorial Day a little different this year. I don't normally go out and party. I normally am, you know, uh, celebrate my brother's passing, which is a different type of celebration for me. But I did that as well because I went to a birthday party right on his day. So I know losing, you know, a teenager is something really, really hard to deal with and to get over. And sometimes you do have to do things different. I wish that this could have been avoided. I hate that, you know, we're, we're dealing with this through this time, but, you know, big ups to all the people who fought in the wars. We're not trying to take anything away from you and your Memorial Weekend, but I think a lot of times now people have kind of started turning it in, you know, Memorial Weekend outside of just for the veterans who uh, lost their lives in the wars, fighting for our country into things like this, where there are mass shootings. Yes. So, that part. I mean, what um, what can we say? What can we say? All right. Anything else? Any last Woo. comments you have on that, Mr. Thompson? Yeah. We got to take care of the future, and these children are our future. We got to keep them safe and educated. Very true. Now, if it is your dream to be on TV or behind the scenes of a dynamic organization that is on the move, why not start your journey here with I'm Just Saying Live? I definitely need some people and I am growing and have some big things coming up. I definitely need your assistance. So if you would like a gig, if you will, please let me know. All you have to do is email me at I'm Just Saying Live at gmail.com today. Now, I told you in just a little bit, we are going to be talking with Mr. Andre Notice, who is going to be coming on. Um, we're going to do a little bit of an introduction first as to who he is and the different things he has going on around in the city. Uh, he has some fun things and he has some really, really important things to help you stay mentally sane, if you will. This is our last segment um, for Mental Health Awareness Month. Anthony. What is one of the ways that you keep your mental health intact? Talking to go. Really? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, that was one of the things that I really liked about the interview with Ash uh, of 713 Motoring today. Uh, the very first thing that he said was, you know, basically that he is faith based and he remembers that he needs to pray. You know, I'm not telling anybody who to pray to, but you definitely need to know that there's some higher power out there that gives you that peace, gives you that sanity. Some people use music. Some people, you know, reach out to their family and friends, but you definitely got to be a careful careful with that because you never know the people that you're telling you know all what you got going on if they have your best interest at heart and I'm not only talking about people out there in the streets sometimes this can be your family as well but if you stay prayed up when those things happen you don't have to worry about it now does everybody have to know you know what you got going on from day to day when it comes to your religion because I know that there's times when some people are real high and then there's times when you get real low. But again, like you said, that's one of your ways of staying sane. <laughs> Some people fall into their work. There's all different types of ways that you can, you, you can get away from the monotony or the things that are going on. So before we get too far, before we get too far going on that, because I can get to harping. Look. <laughs> This is I'm Just Saying Live. We're glad, glad, glad to have you here. I am right now waiting for our Mr. Andre Notice. It is time for him to check in with us. And I cannot wait to see what he has to offer us today on this very last minute of Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, I had some other events that I was going to show you guys uh, in regards to mental health awareness. Uh, check out Society of Royals. If you are one of those people who has a kid that you've been watching and you feel like they are having some types of mood swings that need to be checked out, they are on Instagram and they are for teen mental health. OK, you know, I can't tell you grown folks what to do, but I know those parents who are caring for their children and know that we're going through these times right now, um, especially after this Uvalde shooting. Please, please, please get your kids checked out, because not only are they dealing with things right now, we are dealing with things when we see 
you know, somebody uh, of another race, you know, kind of walk into the parties or different scenes with us. All we thinking is, oh, Lord, you know, that one thought, yes. oh, Lord, it's about to happen. You know, <laughs> it's, that's, sad. That's not fair. it's sad, but that's your mental. It, you, you messed up and you don't even realize that you're messed up until something like that happens. Which is, again, which, which is sad. <laughs> yeah. Society pretty much messed a lot of us up like that. Not only the fact that, you know, things that has taken place in this world or in our time of sin, but at the same time, Texas is the, the okay corral. Okay. So, what what, what, what you mean by it's the okay corral? Hey, from the wild, wild west. Have your gun on your hip and be ready to <laughs> we, shoot. We, we need to be moving back to martial law. I think that even more murders would happen. Um, no, not martial law. Not martial okay. law. That's the okay martial corral. Law. That's the way um, of life. Well, the government was pretty much controlling when, when it comes to martial law. But the okay corral back in uh, the Western days, hey, you shoot somebody, you tell the cop, hey, I shot him because of X, Y, Z. He was on my property. You bust him in his, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, he 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 offended me, so I shot him, Marshall. Yeah, no, go ahead. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him, Mr. Thomas. No, okay. Don't, don't shoot him. Shot him. I shot him. All righty. So I'm over here, and I'm trying to get in contact with our person. Let me see what's going on right here. And you say his name was Notice. Notice you like that. I have one other little extra to talk about before he looks oh. on here. Listen, we know that the housing market has been, you know, all over the place. Have you decided to make a purchase in this market? Let me tell you a little something that I found to be a little secret because I have a friend who's been looking for a new property. Um, I know that the prices in the market are really high, but if you made a purchase, whether you're um just about to buy a home or looking to renew your insurance. You know, a lot of us have a hard time looking at these policies, but I found this thing out there called Policy Genius, okay? It compares the policies for you, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Uh, to tell you which one you should go with. This is definitely something that I wish I would have had uh, when it came time to buy my um, homeowner's insurance because when you get out there, you don't know what you're doing that first go round. You hear all kinds of things. Somebody had a bad experience over here, so you don't go with them. Somebody had a bad experience over here, so you don't go with them. Right, right. But you need to know what's best for you, what's best for the time period that you're living in. Okay. A lot of people, homework. a lot of people don't take the time to do that. And Policy Genius is out there to help you be able to do that. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully. If you're out there and you're in this game right now, because we know that it's been um, a seller's market, if you will, people are getting way over the value uh, of their properties right now, which I'm not uh, mad at. But for my friend who is out there trying to find a property, it's been really hard with people influxing lots of money into the housing market. And what was, what was the name of, what are their names again? Who? The Policy Genius? Is that oh, what you're talking about? Yes. And this yes. is another thing I want to tell you. A lot of people say when they're going out there and they get this, they tell you that you're going to most likely wind up with that company for years and years and years just because you don't want to go through the process of trying to find a new company to get your insurance with, getting everything switched over and this, that, and the other. So I don't, he's saying he's on now. I don't see you. Thanks for the advice on purchasing a new one. Let me see, guys. I'm sorry. Here we are again. No, definitely not. Let me see if I hit this. I'm trying to get him on. Hmm. We hear that homework to find out if they're good or not. I'll make phone calls to see. Let's see. Still not seeing him. 
you got to start doing your own homework. Talk to your family members. Or what the reverend say, Google it. Everything is Googleable. You can see what's going on out here. Who has the better prices? But Tanil said the market right now is up and down. I agree with that, like a roller coaster. But if you can sell, sell, as long as it's profitable for you. Sell it, Tanil, sell it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm over here trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lord Jesus, help us out. I am going to go on because I, I can't say what is on my mind right now. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, y'all have, no, have no idea. Okay. I'm just saying, you want me to say it? Because I can say it. Oh, my goodness. Ninjas. <laughs> and we're not talking about the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, this Did is we too get, far. get a thing yet? Jesus. Lord. Woo, Mr. Okay. Notice, you're killing me. <laughs> I'm for the serve your notice, brother. <laughs> you're going to be serving notices real quick. What's funny? I'm sorry, y'all. This is too funny. Well, I'm a, it a bit, I'm a, and you know it. Okay. It's Tuesday. There it's we go. Thank Monday. goodness. Here we go. Lord Jesus. Woo! Mr. Notice. Where is it? Welcome. Welcome. Notice on his door. <laughs> you gonna get a you gonna get a notice in a minute. Lord Jesus, we were struggling there. I was like, I was like, oh my God, what is going on today? <laughs> she over here sweating. <laughs> Welcome. Uh oh. What what is that? Something playing. Like, like, oh, oh, that's you. That's you. Okay. Is that me? Let's cut the volume down on it. Yes. Got it. All right. Great. I was on the Facebook link, not the Zoom link. That's my mistake. Okay, here we go. Good so morning. I was like, I don't see him. I don't know what's going on. And that's why I wanted you to be here so everybody can see you and see what all we got going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Andre Notice. Now he has been out there in the streets and he is trying to get you guys right, not only mentally, but you know, in your pockets as well, trying to coach you into your new life. Now, listen, Absolutely. this is this is going to be a new segment that's going to be on every last Tuesday in the month called Legacy Living, okay? We're going to get right into it because he is going to right now tell you about how to transition into the new you. Go right ahead, Mr. Notes. Well, tell him a little bit about yourself first, because I know you've been here several times. You're a friend of the show. So uh, tell him, tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then we'll jump into Legacy Living. Absolutely, absolutely. So for those that do not know who I am, um, I am your rhyming realtor for your dream home. We need to buy or sell. I am the purpose coach for those that feel like they're going through hell. I am the speaker here to motivate, encourage, and inspire. I'm a poet as well. I grab the mic to spit bars of fire. The book that I wrote, it's changing lives as well. A servant is what I am on a mission to serve, not sell. When it's all said and done, help others reach their full potential by helping them find their purpose to find true joy. It is essential. So Andre Notice is my name and inspiration is who I be. It is true, I live to give and you will notice me. All right. I'm sure plenty of people know okay. that. Okay. <laughs> He's spitting that fire. All right. Hey, man, we're here. we're here to make a difference. We're here to make a difference. You know what? Before we actually get into that, tell us a little bit about the events you've been putting on. I did see them. I, I have not not been busy. Let's say that, but I'm definitely going to get out there. I'm going to drag this one over there with me. Um, right. And we're going to have to come out to one of these events. They look definitely, they look like th they've been lit, okay? I need to get out there to see what's going on. Tell them a little bit about the events that you guys have been putting on. Yeah, so I got a couple of events I'm excited about coming up. Um, I did one event with the organization called The Mingle. It was a singles event where we had, event, uh, we had a panel discussion and just talking about single, what it means to be single, what it looks like in today's dating streets. Um, another event I'm working on right now, 
tentatively have the date scheduled for June 23rd. It's gonna be called Table Talk with a twist. And Table Talk is pretty much an open forum. We have other individuals from our age group and similar mindsets to come together to talk about um, relationships, politics, turn events, um, dating, all kinds of different things. And we just have an open forum to talk about these things and make sure that we have a better understanding for how others are thinking and doing things so that we can come together and, and bridge the gap. Because there's a big, there's a big uh, disconnect between um, men and women among our community. And I'm trying to change that and bridge the gap and also bring more awareness to not only health, um, but also success and how to achieve that as well. So many people are living below their means. They have no idea as to why. So I'm doing my job to change that. So I'm excited about that as well. Okay, so that's what this segment is about to be about, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, living healthy and wealthy, if you will. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. This is Legacy Living. Absolutely. So um, most people live and die and never find out why they were even here because of fear. So one thing that I say, if you want to know what you were created for, you got to go back to the create tool, Mm. right? Um, God had me write a book six years ago. He gave me the title to the book. It's called Your Purpose is Not for You. This is the book. Um, Years later, I finally wrote it (laughs) after he gave me the title. And right now... We know that that happens with a lot of people. Um, We don't want to step into... We don't want to step into who we're supposed to be at that time. Mm-hmm. Not at like all. It's fearful. We have a it's million scary. other things going on and it ain't right, but we do it. <laughs> right. right. And, and, and the reason why is because a lot of it springs about out of fear. And, you know, fear comes, I like the acronym for fear. Um, and there's so many of them out there, but I, I think fear is an illusion. I really believe that it's an illusion. And most of the things that we fear don't even come to pass anyway. So I want to help people understand that the very first step to success, in my personal opinion, the very first step is desire. You got to want it bad enough first. Because if you don't want it, then you're not even going to take the steps that are needed and necessary to, to proceed. Okay. So I'll help people understand that you got to want it first. You yeah, want your it your best yourself. friend can't want it for you more than you because they saw you walking in your purpose and right. told you that this was your thing. They cannot right. want it more than you do. You know, Correct. they can't help and push you more than you want to push yourself. When it's Correct. time to work, you have to do the work, ladies and gentlemen. Correct. 100% accurate. And if you have the desire then I believe the very next step, in my personal opinion, is mindset. Okay. Mindset is where it all begins. Everything starts and ends with mindset, the way that you think. Um, As beings, we are all programmed. We all have a conditioning. And to the degree that you don't program your mind yourself, it will be programmed for you as a result of your neglect. Okay. So... From the time that you were born, throughout those very young years when you've been told what to do, what to say, you're constantly being told different things from your parents, from your teachers, from your surroundings. And through those constant repetition of information has formed what you believe even until today. Okay. And it shaped your mindset. And what happens is, We get stuck based on the things that were told to us from such a long time ago on a a regular basis Mm -hmm. that that's become your belief system shaped from somebody else's belief system. Right. So here's the thing. I'm I'm, I'm going to just be open and honest right now, ladies and gentlemen. I am definitely one of those people. uh, My mom, if you will, uh, was very, very uh, truthful. But in a negative way, you know, we've talked about this here on the show before, where even though she's feeling like she's giving you that tough love, you know, it is breaking you down mentally on the inside and you start believing those things once you start hearing them so many times. It's that repetition that starts to build who you are. But this is what I also want to say to that. 
There's tons of your friends out there who don't even know that they are that way. When you keep reminding them, that's the only way they can get past it. So when you say, oh, well, I ain't fooling with her. You know, a lot of people like to say, oh, I've got to get that away from me or I've got to blah, blah, blah. Sometimes those people need to be taught. That's what this is about right here. We're telling you, look, it may not even be your issue that you're still dealing with. That's something that came down, passed down. It, yeah. it wasn't even you. It's not even you who really feels that way. You've not right. taken time to find out who you are. You have to find out who you are. And, you know, I, I have a hard time with the manifestation. I'm glad that you have not, you know, used that word when you're explaining and describing this, even though basically that's what it is uh, by the definition now if you will. Everybody has said that they need to manifest, but we've all been those people that need to look to higher things every single day. And if you don't, weren't doing that, that's, that's kind of weird to me anyway. But I think that, you know, repetition definitely makes a difference in your life. I will say. 100% that. accurate. Yeah. So our, our minds are conformed based on repetition. That's how, that's where habits begin. Is, is based on the things that you do over and over and over again. So the, the thoughts that you think mm-hmm. are a habit. The actions that you take are a habit. And once you take, take those habits for such a long time, it goes from this being a habit to being your lifestyle. Okay. And lifestyle is most people are living a lifestyle that they don't even want for themselves but they, they have no idea as to how to break the mold, how to do things different, how to change from um, the, the negative thoughts that come across their mind, how to break away, how to shift their mindset from thinking those negative thoughts. Right, and, and that's the teaching that I was telling you about. Don't give up on, don't give up on your people. If you found somebody that's in your circle and you realize that that's going on, like I said, they may not know you don't always have to just immediately give up on them, walk away, teach them the way of the Jedi. No, (laughs) you understand what I'm saying? You have to, you have to teach them. They won't, they won't get it. Maybe at first when you keep saying, uh, maybe you shouldn't make that comment because it is stopping you from getting where you're trying to go. They have to actually see the vehicle working. Yes, absolutely. And, but, and the thing about, so I think exposure is one of the biggest things because without exposure, you have no idea as to what the possibilities are, you know, and you're subject to whatever is right there in front of you. So for, I'll give you an example. Um, one of my favorite cars was a Lexus. Okay. And I, I drove a Lexus. I had a Lexus. I still have it today. And you couldn't tell me that it wasn't the best car in the world for whatever reason, for whatever reason that I liked it. And then Tesla came out. He was like, "Uh uh-oh, wait a minute. (laughs) And I'm looking at him, hmm. And then I finally got a chance to test drive one. And I would never know the possibilities of what could possibly be better until I I was exposed to something more, something better. So it goes. That's a big thing. That's a life exposure is a huge thing. Uh, Even with those cars, you know how many people are afraid to go and test drive a car that's out of their price range? Why? You have a driver's license just like everybody else. Take your butt up there so you can see what you really want. You might want to save up a little bit more coin before you go make that new purchase to get that thing that you really want instead of settling for what you're used to. Yeah, Yeah. it's exposure, but. So, so here's, here's a quote. I want you to understand this quote. It says, once your mind has expanded, it can never go back to the way that it was. Mm. So that knowledge of me knowing what a Tesla is and can do, I can't undo that. Now I now know. And now that I now know, I have to now make decisions based on me going towards what I say I want now or not. But my mind, regardless of what the decision I make, my man, my mind can't go backwards. I'm, I've now been exposed to it, which is the reason why I think traveling is so ex- extremely important because it allows you to expand your mind beyond what you're used to seeing here in America. So um, when it goes back to mindset, you have to understand that the thoughts that you think on a regular day-to-day basis, every single day, from the moment you get up, 
to the time that you go to bed at night, you are thinking a lot of times the same thoughts. And a lot of these thoughts are unconscious. What do I mean by unconscious? They, though, that basically means that you're not even trying to think these thoughts. They're just repetition of habits of thoughts that you've been thinking as a result of that habit. And a lot of these thoughts are based on what you've been taught from childhood. And it goes on to, through your 30s and your 40s and even your 50s. And these, and are, these never, apply to all across things, the relationships, yes. you know, yes. the type of car you drive, the everything. Yes. It, it goes yes. to everything, how you feel about jumping in the water. You know, so many right. people don't want to swim because, you know, yeah. <laughs> they heard right. such and such drowned, you know. So keep going. Sorry about that. 100% accurate. So if you've never taken the time out to assess those thoughts, and you've never taken time out to diagnose those thoughts, and you've never taken the time out to recondition those thoughts, then they will continue. What's one of your uh, What's one of your avenues for getting people to recondition themselves? Affirmations. Okay. That's one of them. Is there um, an app or anything like that that you suggest, or a book, something at Barnes and Nobles that you suggest for people maybe to kind of get started if they're one of those people who kind of wants to walk into this new light? Yeah, there there are a couple of different things that you can do. Um, but I, I would just start with your personal self and asking yourself what it is that you want to achieve about yourself. Because I can tell you, I can tell you affirmations, but would it be subject to what I want from my life or subject to your life? You see what I'm saying? Because we all have to, we all have to find things that work for well, us. Well, not an affirmation. I mean, like an app or something like that, that kind of tailors towards you, because I think there's one called like I am or something like that, but I don't know how good it is compared to other things that you've seen out there. There's they one give you called, things that are tailored toward you. There's one, I believe it's called You Are Creators. Okay. A gentleman by the name of Justin. He also has a YouTube channel called You Are Creators. Um, and that's a good, that's a good place to start. Um, okay. Meditation is another big thing. Okay. Uh, I meditate daily. That's another big thing I do as well. I actually do meditate and do affirmations at the same time at times. How do people, so maybe we need to add that to part of one of the segments for one month and kind of get people started with that because I think a lot of people think that they're meditating and they think they're blocking it all out, but they're not. Um, I had a very hard time at first starting because I never knew if I was, you know, really getting it right. And I think yeah. a ton of people out there who need that education. Absolutely. So again, here we are back to the same yeah. question again. Right. Where do you go to get started? Right. YouTube University. YouTube University. That's number one. Okay. And, a, and the beautiful check thing out is. Check out live while you're there. Because we always look, love teaching you something. Because we're the best. You will, never, you will never graduate from YouTube University. There's always more to learn. Okay. I am on there daily learning something and even taking what I have learned and expounding on it um, from the time I'm in the car, sometimes when I'm in the gym, sometimes when I'm just at home, I am on YouTube studying because there's so much. YouTube has definitely content. changed the culture. <laughs> it's changed my life for the better. It, def it definitely has. It's changed life for the better. So yeah, I would start there. I would start with YouTube and finding, and you know, you, you're going to find a lot of individuals that talk about the same thing. So find the one that speaks to you personally, okay. find a person that resonates with you, find a person that that when they speak, you find yourself listening to what it is that they have to say. Okay. And find that and find those individuals and follow them. See if they have books that you can get into. See if they have other material that you can get into and stay on top of it. But the mind definitely, is again, I repeat, these are gems that you can uh, use all through your life, ladies and gentlemen. All of those things, everybody doesn't learn the same way. We all know this, you know. And if you go on YouTube or Instagram or wherever and you find and connect with these people that you feel like you have something in common with, those are the people that you stick with. Get like glue. Figure it out. Absolutely. We need to figure Absolutely. some things out. <laughs> Absolutely. Somebody told me on, on Instagram that they were inspired by something I said to write affirmation and, and, and read it to herself daily. Yes. Things like that are extremely powerful and impactful. You can change the way you see yourself internally based on the repetition of your, your affirmations that you say. Um, I can't tell you how powerful it is to say in the mirror, even. Okay. But that's one way to shift your mindset. 
to things that you want to think about and things that you want to attract and circumstances that you want to have. So yes, I definitely say that that is something that I would highly recommend as well. And I'm supposed so, to be letting you talk and not ask these questions, but I can't yeah. help but ask when it comes to actually believing these things, because you know, that's the only way that it's going to work. Yeah. How do we get to the believing part? How yeah. do we consume <clears throat> it within ourselves? How do we right. believe that these things are true, not that past? Yeah, yeah. So there's a scripture uh, or slash quote that says, faith comes by hearing. Faith is belief right? Faith comes by hearing. If I tell you, if I tell you something long, uh, a lie long enough, what happens? Oh, you start to believe it. You start to believe it. It doesn't matter if it's real or not. True. If I, if I tell myself a lie long enough, pretty soon it's going to become my truth, not the truth, my truth. I start to believe it. So you have to, you have to say it so often that it becomes your truth that you believe it for yourself. So what happens is when you say something one time, whether it's real or not, you may or may not believe it. But once you continue to say it and then you hear yourself say it, it goes from being in your conscious mind to your subconscious mind. Once it's in your subconscious mind, you believe it and it's automatic. Okay. Then it starts to work into the universe. So it's the constant repetition as to how you get to believing that which you want to believe about yourself or about anybody else. So that's the answer to the question. So, so, so y'all heard it right here on I'm Just Saying Live. Mr. Andre Dover, telling us a little bit about your use of this driving condition. mute yourself, please. Oh, sorry. Um, so you just heard it from Mr. Andre Notice right here. You have to tell yourself these things on a daily basis. You need to start believing that you are amazing and wonderful and just as great as me. Look. <laughs> because I'm going to tell y'all, it's, it's, it's not nothing that you can tell me. I think that I'm a wonderful person, but I am growing every single day. I'm learning and surrounding myself uh, with people like this who always have great spirits. Those are things that I like to do to keep myself mentally sound. Uh, I was telling people earlier that we are right here at the end of Mental Health Awareness Month, and there is nothing like believing in you. You have That's to meet you every single day, believe in you every single day. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Don't get outside of the box. Today, I uh, want to tell all y'all, go drive a Tesla. Look. <laughs> I did the doors up look yeah, I did. <laughs> feel, let your arms breathe a little bit and see how you feel do something new uh i am a firm believer in doing that you know uh, uh people talk to me about my kids all the time uh well you let them do so much you're right i do because i want them to come up with something that i never could have even imagined yeah period yeah, yeah. period yeah. i don't i want you to come back and say you know what today i did I, what Oh my, I need those stories, okay? When I'm yeah. in my rocking chair, I'm gonna need those stories that you did something amazing because that's the only way you're gonna be able to do that is if you keep pushing toward the future. Right. Period. Period. And, li and life is about experiences and memories. That part. And legacy living. You gotta know it to be able to pass it on to somebody else, okay? Look, <laughs> you, got, you gotta know to be able to pass it on to somebody else. We can't tell you about things that we haven't experienced for ourselves. Now, we may experience them in a different way, in a different light in front of other people. You need to have your experience so that you can pass it on and tell people we are talking about traveling. I love to go see new things. I, I am not going to lie. Sometimes I forget to even pick up my phone because I'm just in the moment. In the moment. Yeah, time. it's a beautiful thing to be in the moment. Oh, yeah. it, okay, yeah. I got to start putting it in some, you know, I like the water activities. I'm a water person. Um, yeah. I have to start uh, my waterproof phone. I'm still scared. Cause I'm old school. Here we go with the scary <laughs> thinking um, to put my phone near, you know, near too much water. And so sometimes, you know, it has to get lost in transition. It's out somewhere else while I'm in the waterfalls and whatever else. But it. Andre, I want to thank you so very much. Tell everybody where they can follow you on social media. Absolutely. So um, just real quick, um, I okay. launched, I'm launching and launching a coaching program showing people how to shift their mindset. It's also for individuals who want to take their, life and transition from employee to entrepreneurship. So I'm launching that June 28th. Um, it's also good for individuals who have a business 
and want to take it to new new levels, new heights, or trying to start a business, things like that. Um, I'm showing you the blueprint, how to get it done. I'm focusing on your mindset, um, like you said earlier, manifestation, and how to map out a plan to get that done. So I'm excited about that. It's dropping here in June. Okay. Um, but you can follow me. It's easy to find me. I am Googleable, <laughs> so you can <laughs> Google Andre Notice, um, or you can go to Andre Notice, and this the word is just like N O T I C, the regular word Notice, Andre Notice.com. And you'll be able to see uh, my book is there, my socials are there, um, publications, awards, things like that that I've done. And I'm just grateful to be here to be impactful and be a, a benefit and a blessing to others. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So everybody make sure out there on social media, you tell me right now in the comments how well you think Mr. Notice did. If you're going to go follow his page and read his book, ladies and gentlemen, I'm simply Dr. Neal. That's Andre Notice. And this was Legacy Living. You need to get into your now, okay? We cannot wait for you to get out there and go learn how to be an entrepreneur if you are not already doing Doing that. So thank you so much for being on I'm Just Saying Live today, and we will see you next month. <laughs> All right, Anthony, we are back. So I don't know what you was doing when you, got, when you were off. I don't know if you were listening. Uh, did you have anything that you felt like was interesting that you'd like oh, to notice? Everything was interesting. I mean, and I agree with a lot of stuff that both of y'all stated for as the, the changing like you were talking about the car, how you know if you like that car or not if you don't go try it? Uh, right. Test drive that car, you, you say, save up your money. But at the same time, it comes to not only the upbringing, but you old enough where you can start taking these chances, taking these, start taking ownership these experience and, and see if you like them or not. Correct. Take responsibility for yourself at this point. Um, because you how know, many, how many, how many, how many, I said, how many people go out to eat with us sometimes and like, Oh, I'm not trying it. I'm not eating that. I I don't like that. You never even try to see if you like it. I try. Every, I try everything know. once. Everybody knows right? that about me. I'll try it at least once. <laughs> so for spicy food, I'm not doing nothing spicy. Oh, you That's don't. Too hot. You don't want to be sweating and and, and all, all no. that extra. <laughs> no, that's too much. Let the food just be normal. And I try, you know, squid, octopus, alligator. I tried to eat it all. It's all good. Calamari, it don't matter. It's taste it's cargo. <laughs> it's you, you you definitely you definitely come a long way with with trying all the different. <laughs> hey, shh, people are listening. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's too funny. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time 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 for me to get back on this screen sharing, if you will. Remember that AUA is in the middle of their donation drive. We need socks underwear, t-shirts, bras, and bed linens. We do great when you donate, okay? You can also do the real easy thing and cash app us at cash tag AUA donation. We would love, love, love to have your help. And remember that our giveaway is July the 23rd. So we will be collecting all the way up till July 22nd. <laughs> We'll take whatever you have so that we can give as much of it away uh, to the kids out on July the 23rd. All right. And if, you can't, and if you can't make the donation by the 23rd, you can come out to Finnegan Park and Fifth Ward and donate yourself. That was not what I wanted to have. I don't need nobody coming up there just giving stuff away. They can come up there and help <laughs> donate the, the item. Well, they, can, they can definitely come out and help. We won't be like that. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for entertainment news. This is Simply Dot Tanil, and you can follow me at Simply Dot Tanil. You are tuned in to I'm Just Saying Live, and call me Ant is down there, Mr. Big Truck Driver. I need all the truck drivers to start checking in every week. Just give y'all something to do while you out there on the road. You can listen to us. Listen, we did not get to have the opportunity to talk about Miss Doja Cat's big win. I'm still confused by this because in my mind, Doja Cat is more of a rapper than an R&B artist. But she won Billboard Music Awards R&B Artist of the Year. Beautiful. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with it. I just think of her more as hip hop. I mean, rap. Okay. R&B is rhythm and blues. Okay. 
and she had the song that we listened to. She rapped in it, but it was more like a. We uh, listened to it, you know, to see it, which ones were considered, yeah. and it went right on in there with the R and B. So I mean, think about R Kelly. R Kelly was a a singer, but how many rappers he had? Um, and I know his, that everybody has different. I know that everybody has different opinions uh, when it comes to you know certain things like this or whatever. But in my mind, I have always thought of her more along the lines of rap, not rhythm and blues. But I listen to blues, so maybe that's what the difference is. Yeah. Guess that's what? Really now y'all know I used to love this girl right here, Miss Carrie Hilson, baby. Okay. Mm, she got blackballed. Well, she got blackballed. Let me tell you what's going on. I put the <laughs> form in, and that's exactly what she was doing. People don't know if she was in the back room at the Walmart or at the on stage at, at the back of the Hilton in the uh, employees lounge. The stage was so what? tiny and little wherever she was performing. You remember that time we saw somebody, uh, what was that, JT or somebody who was performing on uh, out there on the, on the beach? Oh, sweetie. This sweetie, uh, this, this, this was worse than that, Anthony. She was in the back closet somewhere. Looked like she couldn't take but four steps to the right and four steps to the left on this stage. She's still performing, doing her thing. But man, y'all got her in the closet. Help me, girl, she, please. Somebody, she please, was, book on the show. Let her open up for somebody or something because uh, she looks great. But why she was where she was, we have no idea. Maybe she was doing this favor to a friend. I ain't mad at you, girl. You do your thing. I'm going to just applaud you from here. You're still cute and you can sing. Was she at the paint? She, it was worse than the paint. Paint had a bigger what? stage. <laughs> oh, Chuggalisa. <laughs> the stage in Chuggalisa was big. So I mixed in some things that, you know, have kind of going on that I wanted to talk to you guys about and didn't get the opportunity. Jason Momoa is dating Eliza Gonzalez. He loves somebody with a little color in their skin, don't he? I'm happy with it. Uh, after his after his breakup with Lisa Bonet, this is who he has decided to move on with in his life. She's beautiful. She's younger than Lisa. I don't know if he's still trying to make babies or what he's trying to do, but help him, Lord. He sure can't pull one down. As long as he stays sexy, I guess he'd be all right. I'm just saying. You say what? Ew, old sugar daddy want a young thing. I guess he flipped from being the, the, the sugar baby. Now he the sugar daddy. I think that they're probably closer along the uh, uh closer along the same age. I probably I should have definitely looked up her age. Mm -hmm. All righty. So Ain't right no one now, the young woman in your life. Speaking of young women, one. you're so silly. Speaking of young women, the Millers are mourning the loss of Ty. I want to uh, Ty Tyana. I believe is how you pronounce her name. Um, Master oh, Tatiana. Yeah, yeah. Twenty nine. Huh? No. Well, right. She Master was twenty nine, right? Yeah. Right. right. She was very young, and they have not come out with exactly what was going on. But on Romeo's page, he did say that uh, she was in a better place, and she was no longer fighting her fight. So I don't know if that's a reference to a drug addiction. Or if it is a reference to, you know, um, a disease Cancer, that or illness or something. she had been battling. So I'm sure that we will hear uh, later in this week what's going on with that. Uh, Master P did put out a thing saying that, you know, they were in mourning. It was a very sad time for them. So uh, definitely, if you're a praying person, pray for their family. Now, I definitely wanted to talk about this because we did not get to talk about this here on the show, Anthony Thomas. When... You have somebody out there who's saying you ain't pimping until you hit an R&B diva. Oh, Lord. Media. Antonio, <laughs> Brown. Antonio Brown put it out there, you know, stating the fact that, you know, he, him and Keisha really wasn't nothing, but, you know, he was doing his thug thizzle. Everybody was so upset and so mad and this, that, and the other. Keisha even came back and said it is what it is. You know, that's kind of like, it was the facts. You can't be mad at this man for putting the facts out there. We very much so know who this man is at this point. Do we think he's an attention whore a little bit, Anthony? No, that just that that's who whom he is now. 
and people just keep catching it. Right. It's and so he's different still, from and he's putting it on social media. So to me, it is so to me, it is what it is. If all of that is going on, he's having a good time, he's out there living his life. Is it at you know the cost of other people sometimes, you know, which he probably shouldn't have said that, you know, about Keisha, but it gave her a little time in the limelight again. Really honestly, he made her popular. Now she's a diva, she's definitely a you know, person who's been out there for a while and has a name behind herself. But right now, this young man is popping. He out there on the scene. So it actually was a good look for her, in my eyes, to be seen or and on around him and kind of have her name thrown back up into the sauce so she could be making her comment right now about. Yeah, because people, people that don't people that don't know Keisha Cole, they're going to start Googling and see who Keisha Cole is, listen to her music. So that was Very a true. spotlight for her. So we ain't going to be mad about it. She ain't cloud chasing because she ain't got to. But I mean, if it helps, it helps. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now to our affirmation. There is one rule in the jungle. When the lion What's is that? hungry, he eats. Okay. Definitely remember that. We were just talking with Andre Notice in regards to changing your life. Go out there and eat up some stuff. Look. <laughs> We talked I'm about always food. hungry. Listen, there's always that next thing. And I'm not saying don't be content with your situation right now. What I'm saying is if you want it, go get it. Just like the I'm just saying live theme song says, I'm gonna get it. If I want it, I'm gonna get it. Period. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, next. Now we I talk always be hungry for more. <laughs> We talked to you earlier about, there's a picture from the Buffalo uh, Memorial that we talked about earlier, but I also wanted to talk to you about our movie scoops for the week. Now, we had some really big things go on when it came to movies this weekend, but I want to talk to you about a documentary first, um, WTF When Thugs Fly, okay? Now, this is by Wino. You remember Wino? Yes. yes. All right. The rapper, so the fifth part. Correct. He, he definitely exactly. did all of that, but he has a documentary out about how he transitioned his life. I was trying to tie this in to Mr. Notice's, you know, conversation earlier. We're just going to keep y'all on the transition uh, locomotion today, locomotive today. Um, it talks about his transition in life and the different things that he went through. And this is the real story, supposedly. You know how that goes when people be telling a story. And Guess who he had right there helping him through all the transition and everything else from day one? Who? His wife. Oh, that's the same really lady nice. he been with forever. You can't be. And she say, "You can't be telling uh -huh. what's going. You can't tell what's in the movie." Oh, I don't know the movie. I just know. Oh, okay. okay gotcha. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know he had a fifth wall, so of course I know. But anyway. <laughs> I also want to talk about another movie that I don't know if a lot of people slept on because I definitely did at first, but I'm glad, glad, glad to be able to, you know, come back. I went and watched this movie. Finally, Jennifer Hudson, Respect, the Aretha Franklin story. Now, uh, we I actually wound up watching it twice because there were so many little important pieces of information in here about Aretha's life that I myself did not know. I don't know if many okay. of you knew that she had her first child at 12 years old. 12 years old. Baby, that is young, young, okay? So she had gone through a lot of things. You know, uh, we do see, you know, everybody talks about these actors and movie stars and how they all have, you know, their one thing that kind of tries to bring them down. And so in this, we see all of that. But it was such a powerful story behind a powerful woman who is a staple uh, in the lives of African-Americans everywhere. I really, really, really want you guys definitely to check this out. Now, before I tell you about the last movie, y'all know that to Neil's touchy subjects, we need y'all to write in about these touchy subjects, okay? It is very, very hard for me to try to pull them from the sky all over the place, okay? I need you guys to email us at I'm just saying live. 
please. I'm just saying live. Email us, DM us, follow us so we can get these touchy subjects and discuss, discuss, discuss right here on I'm Just Saying Live, okay? So I'm going to stop my screen share for just a little second so I can tell you a little bit about this. Now, I want to talk about the Top Gun Maverick this weekend. You know, I like to throw numbers out there and I like you to know information. I was a little worried about this because I just could not see Top Gun coming back the right way and still trying to include the actors that were in it from before and all of this. I get a little weird, but it seems like people have been doing a really great job at this. Top Gun. 30 man, years ago or 50 years ago? Man, I, I don't know how many years ago the original came out, <laughs> but... It brought in $156 million over this Memorial Day weekend. We know that all y'all had plans and parties and, you know, um, I wanted to go out and put the flags at the Veterans Cemetery. There, there were so many things going on and $156 million worth of y'all still got out there to the box <laughs> office and actually went to the movies to see this movie? Man. So also Eurovision um, winners sell uh, a tr their tr a trophy. Oh, I'm going through the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, they set up here. So all this, everybody went out there. They say that it's really good. And I'll make sure that I put it in there with its photo and give it its proper accolades when I have a chance to see it. But I have not seen it yet. So if you've seen it, let me know what you thought about it. Write down in the comments right now. Woo! All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now 1130 and you know what that means. What does that mean? I knew we was going to do this. I'm going to have to post the touchy subject to I'm just saying lives page because our time is up, Mr. Thomas. It is 1130 and it's time to check, check, check out. This has been another wonderful episode of I'm just saying live. Make sure you link back up with us this week, not only here, but also on our YouTube page. Please like, subscribe and share with your friends and family. We're going to keep providing you the best in edutainment, period. I'm simply Dot Tenille. And I'm call me underscore Ant. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.